Hello, I'm David Wamsey. This video is called Finding Processes to Build Beaver Builder Websites. I couldn't think of a better title. And the reason for this video is that some people have asked me to talk a bit more about my processes. And a few, after conversations, have said I should probably better explain my Beaver Junction project. If that doesn't mean anything to you, here is the website at beaverjunction.com. And what you essentially see here is a plugin that you can install which has a bunch of templates with custom code in them. So these templates are largely workable templates and training videos that go with this. So it can extend Beaver Builder in a lightweight way. So you can take what I've done, change it, and then throw away the plugin. But this is part of a larger project to me, very much tied in with my processes. So I thought I would combine things. I have talked about some of my processes before, and I thought I'd just quickly run over where I'm up to and where Beaver Junction fits in and where I'm gonna be taking that project going forward. I don't know how much use this will be to other people, but I thought I'd cover what I'm trying to do. And I also imagine as I'm putting out a lot of videos at the moment and showing that I've got renewed focus on Beaver Builder, it might seem odd to some people who are turning their attentions to Gutenberg. So I wanted to explain why I'm not as well. Okay, let me just go and cover some main things. These are, I guess, my main aim since building client sites and it applies to the processes as well as the tools that I use. So probably most of us share a common aim. The first one here that we want to be able to build sites more easily and faster. And if you build them a lot, you probably want to minimize your repetition, re reduce burnout that you get if you have to keep doing the same thing over and over again. And I think most people will probably share that goal but I'm always balancing this against these other three goals, which I have to remind myself of. And that is um, that I want, particularly with tools, that they use the minimal server resources all the time, that they're fast on the front end and also often forgotten the back end. And the reason for this is, and it goes in as well with my processes, the more lightly I can kind of code up or develop the sites then the better that's going to be for me in terms of hosting and the reason is because of the type of business that we've decided to go for so in reality building a site for somebody is really a small part of what we're doing for someone and a small part of our income I have clients now that are been with us for 10 years and I hope that's going to be with most I don't you lose many people and we do their hosting and their care or their maintenance for them so if my hosting cost goes up because my tools are getting bigger all the time or it's I'm using more hosting because I didn't set about the making the site in a good way I'm only shooting myself in the foot so that's going to be a key part of the way that I build sites and the tools that I pick. And it's the same as well with ongoing maintenance side. So I'm charging a set amount a year to look after people's sites. If they break, it's on me to fix it. So it's coming out of my time. And at the moment, we've been able to deliver a fairly low cost, good hosting and maintenance and still manage to make most of the income passive. So my day is my own. So that's kind of a key thing to me. So I have to be very careful with the tools that I pick. I tend to use the same tools and I want to make sure that my methods as well are similar. So when I go in and look at a site and know what's going on in terms of the way that I set things up and what I'm likely to do. Also, the reason why I got into Beaver Builder in the first place was the, the sense that there was a demand for easier editing for clients mostly. They wanted to be more self-sufficient, be able to change more bits of styling needed to be changed by them. That's what they wanted. And that's where the page builder came in primarily. Nowadays, and particularly what I've been looking at recently is my own bad habits with having a page builder. So if a client asked me to redesign or go and look or add some new pages later I might be looking at their site and looking at some content in a column don't know if the the styling for that is in the module the column the row in my custom CSS or whether I put it in some other the places where my CSS could go so I really wanted to make sure that I move forward with this beaver junction to create some kind of system so I don't have that so much that's one of my aims 
I wanted to just talk about this. I could go on about this for a long time. Probably need separate videos for it. I think ease of building is something that's now a reality, even if you're with Beaver Builder. When, when I adopted Beaver Builder in 2014, which is when it came out, uh, I wasn't sure about page builders at all. I thought, looking at the ones that were out there at the time, I thought they were going to be using the same kind of marketing model as was used with Theme Forest Mega Themes, which I've had some experience of and, and got out of very quickly because they promised everything with no coding skills at all. You could have the latest trend, whatever was coming was going to get added. It was always adding and adding and adding. And, you know, what I found trying to cheat my way through building sites there is that, it, you know, even though there would be a million options, uh, there was still something that I wanted, which wasn't one of the options. So either they would add something more, adding more weight to it, or I would have to try and find a way with code to change things. And there was so much there that you couldn't work out what was going on. So that's what I kind of felt about page builders were going to be these horrible things that would, you know, with mega themes, they, they lasted for so long, very popular. Everybody got what they wanted until the burden became too great that they would close them and start again. You know, the, you would have to deprecate some code at some point and you've got so much in there that it wasn't profitable any longer. Better to start with the whole thing and the new promises of a fresh thing. So that's what I felt about page builders. I was convinced that Beaver Builder was not trying to go that route. And, but even so, I think, uh, there's a greater demand for zero coding. And I think even with Beaver Builder, you, can, you don't need any coding to build a really well-designed functional site with Beaver Builder. If you know the principles of design and you know how to kind of lay out the structure, you know how to mark up your content so it's easy, it's a scannable copy that you've got there you've got good navigation you've used good imagery you've left lots of space you know beautiful sites that function very well without touching anything i think what's happened now is that ease of building is has got more attention disproportionately and there's a sense that there's since page builders have taken off particularly in WordPress, there's a sense that there's always new innovations coming out all the time. And I think that's just because there's good money in selling new ways to deliver the same old HTML, CSS and JavaScript. You're just delivering it in different ways, maybe easier, but there's no real new innovation there. It kind of, I feel it, not much has changed there. <clears throat> now there's some great work and it's really appealing, but I feel it's the same model that's always been there before. And it's not an option, I feel, for me. Of course, I'm going to show you something that's a little, maybe controversial, um, but I think it kind of proves my point here. So this is obviously biased in favor of oxygen, but the, I think the facts are probably quite right. Um, if we have a look at this, is, they do this regular charting, the kind of resources, the output on pages, the CSS and JavaScript, which is outputted on a standard page with very little in it. So I think they test it with a header, maybe an image on various uh, page builders. And you can see over time that they have grown, except really Beaver Builder and Oxygen. Uh, WP Bakery has probably been static in terms of its development for some time, unless it's particularly good. But as you can see, all the other ones which are aiming for zero code and add everything, all the things, I mean, they're really appealing all of these, um, Elementor, Divi, and Brizzy, they've all got their audience and they all deliver lots more excitement than say something like Beaver Builder does. But they're all growing in terms of the output. And I did the same thing maybe about a year ago. I mean, the, the chart really makes it stand out a lot. You, you think you've missed Beaver Builder and Oxygen, they're down there. Um, these are all kind of growing upwards as time goes. And I think the same from what I can see, I did a test a, uh, a couple of years back where I installed and just activated the different page builders and measured the back end, the amount of RAM resources that they each needed just to be turned on, basically, uh, without being used. And it's pretty much in line with this, just growing. And I did it again, and they've grown a lot. So it's along the same lines as what we're seeing here with the back end resources. 
to me, they're quite important because if a client's in the back end doing that, working on the sites, it needs to be fast. It's going to use up more of my server resources. If they've got dynamic content, say um, WooCommerce, where you've add to cart and the cart function and is slowed down through back end resources, then that's going to be important. So that's been a key thing as well. And I think that's grown with this. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, if you're a designer and you do lots of really complex stuff and you're really using up all of the output on something like this and need it, you're doing lots of, say, motion effects or something like that on most of your pages and um, you're never going to touch CSS, then, you know, you're going to get the, the full value. Maybe it's not a big deal. And certainly from the front end, you can optimize to a certain degree to get uh, good results. But it, it's it's kind of... Uh, having to fix a problem I, I think that's probably the way things have gone where the demand now uh, wordpress has always had this kind of 80 20 rule where you only put into the core what most people are going to use and the, you know you have to add on with your plugins on that and i think beaver builder kind of adopted the same sort of thing it, it really you can build a good site with beaver builder if you want the extras they they should be added in separate either with code or something else not be built into the core and i think what's happened now with a lot of the page builders everybody says it should be in core so even in the beaver builder most people will say the thing that they had had to do with separate code or plugin should be part of core but i think it's always impossible to do that i i think so something as simple a language as simple as css if you if it's already installed and you know it you can change the values almost as easily as changing the options that's the idea behind the the plugin that i'm doing the series of templates you just change the values not that much more difficult than adding in modules if everybody builds all of that in then it's code in order to deliver code and even with something like beaver builder since version 2.2 which i was a big fan of because it added lots more styling options most of those i think are still good and it didn't increase the weight but there are some things which now i think mm, i things like box shadow i probably want to add this globally to a style sheets because it's quite easy and it's the same with you can't really add all of the potential css that's needed all the things that come in that's experimental into your uh, system and have all the combinations because eventually if everybody has everything that they personally want in a system then you're going to have something that's twice as heavy as the code and twice as complex as the options are going to be as complex as the code that's my feeling on it but anyway it's a very much a personal balance but what as really recently i've been looking at my own bad habits and that's what i'm trying to correct with um beaver junction so i guess i've gone through a period of remembering why i used a page builder in the first place and i've been doing that because of gutenberg has raised questions about the future and what you should be jumping on, what platform you should be using for the future. It's made me reassess what I wanted in the first place and what I expect from something. And um, when it comes down to it, I really only needed a quicker way to lay out my pages and the dynamic content within those pages. Before Beaver Builder, I was using the Genesis framework. I was used to... Um, you know, I'm no real coder, but I could manage. It wasn't that difficult because the code was there. I could change the code on child themes. The difficult bit was laying out the pages, <coughs> excuse me, and putting in content. For that, I would need to, although I could learn it, I'd create PHP templates. I'd borrow other people's snippets, stick it in, rearrange stuff. But in terms of working with clients, they really weren't going to be paying us enough money to change their mind. And while I've discovered that, you kind of can't force uh, round you can't force square pegs into a round hole which was what I was trying to do with clients trying to get them to decide what exactly it was they wanted before we built it because it would be difficult to redo that thing again now I'm more relaxed we do it they book our time they can change their mind if they like because we can change it with page builders so that was really what I was looking for a quicker way to be able to lay out pages because that's the way I felt clients uh, behaved or at least I couldn't find a system where 
clients would just give deliver everything they wanted and then I would deliver it after the event. So it gave us more flexibility there. And then the other key thing was uh, an experience for the clients so they had more autonomy and more control over their back end, something they could understand. So I needed kind of stability there as well in terms of their experience. And then really the two reasons why I'm not jumping on board with Gutenberg at the moment because the layout system for dynamic content hasn't been put in place. And I, as far as I know, there's no evidence that it ever will be. It's really, we're making Gutenberg what it is. At the moment, it's just a better editor for some people. Other people will disagree, and it's not got very good ratings. I can't use it as an editor for clients at the moment because it keeps changing basic principles. In terms of laying out pages, in terms of what I want to do, I don't even know if it's on the agenda. And there's lots to talk about, about how they're delivering blocks anyway and inline styling and all that, and whether that's going to work with a system which will be acceptable for me. I'm sure it will be with WordPress, but it's going to change. If I wanted to jump on Gutenberg now and lay out pages the way that I do, then I'm going to need to adopt another third party other than Beaver Builder, which of course is always going to have to adapt to what Gutenberg is going to do and maybe in competition with it. So that's the reason. I see no evidence of uh, a reason to step off Beaver Builder in terms of what I need to do. And I don't see any evidence that Beaver Builder uh, won't be around for long term doing what it does because it keeps something within what they can uh, achieve, if you like, and it remains stable, something I'm looking for. Okay, so here I'm moving on to what I'm trying to do with the Beaver Junction project. So maybe what I should do next is just recap very quickly on my processes. So I'm not sure what I've been asked for. So I'm going to go from the beginning just to explain my business. So our site, <clears throat> the first step for a client, if they're interested in talking to us, I say book a chat and they book that, I have a chat with them, and then I explain that we work by the hour, that's the way we decided to do it. I know a lot of people say that's a terrible way of doing it, but basically they have to book build days, which are deadlines for a set of work, generally about 16 hours of work done over a week, and that's the deadline. And I will tell people that their projects are either going to take a one, two, three, four days, whatever. But largely, I'm leaving it to them. I just make them aware that they're using our time. So they, they have to pay for it in advance. They can't cancel it. It means that they need to get the content to me to get the value. And if they want it delivered in the quickest time, they have to focus along with me to get help me get the content so they understand that. That's the way that I felt it was the best way to deliver the cheapest cost to them and build up this relationship with them over time. So that's how we do our business. So that's how that works. As soon as somebody books one of their days, then what I do is I go over to my starter site. Let me go into the back end of this. I'm in as a pretend user here. So I've done another video. All these links will be low just if you want to recap or you haven't seen what I do before. So I spin out another site. If I've got their domain, oh, I forgot to mention, usually I ask them when they do that to book the hosting as well. So I give them two weeks uh, grace where they could cancel their booking. So I get them to do the hosting. So if they book and they want to do it later, I'm not paying for their hosting. They're carrying on paying or something. So that's how that works. So most people have got the hosting. Then I set up and spin out a starter site for them. I'll put it on their domain if, if they want and put it on a coming soon page if it's a new one or spin it out on a subdomain of one of our URLs here. And uh, what I use is something called um, Admin Pages Pro, WP Admin Pages Pro. I will link to that. I've got a discount code on that where I set up an onboarding experience for them. So when they come in, they see their name and their title for their website and they click through to the getting started where I have videos for them talking about how the page builder works, uh, things they can do. I use Stencil as well as an image library so they can add in some things there, give them account attached to that. And there's a whole other bunch of stuff and there's some next steps. I'm skimming over this because I've covered it in other videos. So that's how that works. And I also, you know, there's another place here where I keep any of the resources that they might use. So if I make a video for them while we're building this site, I put it there so they've got it as a constant reference or anything else that comes up. I also, and I haven't updated on this, I did a video on using WordPress itself and some free plugins to create a little 
management system because we're only dealing with tasks here. So, and this was a way of getting clients used to going into this and using WordPress itself. So I have this set up and that's how we manage those processes there. So I'm pretty happy with that. There's also another thing which I'm quite happy about, which is dealing with the images, short pixel, we set some of the sizes there and I use a script as well. That means that when a client can go and put in their own images to audition them, it's going to, as long as they follow my instructions to mark up the file with a, a sensible name, it's going to fill in all of the alt tags and descriptions and things like that that are needed for the images. Okay, so that brings you up to date to where I am. Now, where I, I wanted the Beaver Junction plugin to come in is that when I was thinking about what on my starter site I'm going to install, I want everything that I can have to build the sites very quickly. And there's a lot of things that I might have used third-party add-ons packs for that are really just CSS and there. So the idea with this and what you're mostly seeing at the moment, my templates are mostly like kind of add-on packs. There's fancy headers, hover over effects, things I can just drag in to my pages and have there and then get rid of the plugin. Keeps everything very lightweight all the way through than it would adding in a plugin. So I kind of like that. But the ultimate aim is really to work from these templates. So I talked about this in a video before last where I quickly covered over the idea of having a kind of wireframe. Now, oh, I've been messing around with this earlier. I'll just get rid of that. So I have a kind of wireframe which works as a way of, or is going to work, I hopefully, as a way of getting clients into sorting out the content that comes as best as I can. So I'm setting up the common areas for a homepage try and discuss with them which bits are going to be needed so they get an idea of what the content's going to be needed. I will use this as a central place just to quickly change out, as I showed in the last video, the branding so they can see something that's familiar to them, their own branding colors and get them okayed, set up by just changing the central sheet and the values that are in there. And for the future, as I mentioned in the last video, under my rows, similar to pre-built rows that are already in Beaver Builder. I'm creating my own row wireframes. So I can drag in, as I just did there, if I wanted a different header, I can drag this in. It's gonna take the styling I've set up and I've got this design. So we can start to mess around and then once I've got that in place, they can start to think about the content that's there. One of the key things that was missing for me, why I like this wireframe is that I'd never knew image sizes so if i can get a page laid out for them just using this as i'm using placeholder.com here i can get the dimensions for their images before they start to upload their own so i can set those dimensions to be part of wordpress in my settings there so it's automatically going to crop it to their sizes and keep that consistency across the site so that's the kind of aim with that i'm going to go back now to what I'm trying to do with this project, just to remind myself. So yes, so what I'm trying to do is with these first templates I'm doing at the moment, which I started on, I'm trying to get all the bells and whistles that you will find in other page builders there. So we can kind of have overlapping elements so we can have um, scroll animation effects, something I'm working on, I haven't released that at the moment. So we can have those kind of effects where they're needed through the templates. Um, I'm trying to remove my own visual design block. So I'm trying to get an order, explain to the clients how with content there, try and get it looking something like a site earlier on with a wireframe and get those things and have lots of different options. So that's the way, I, it's a way of trying to as well with this, setting it up with my notes on the here. It's a way of explaining to clients. I mentioned this in the video before, but I put little notes in to remind them of what their content needs to do for each of the kind of sections of a site, how they can sell a market in a way that works on websites, which is not what many people are still familiar with, how the internet works and how people, how their traffic comes, how people engage with it. So I have these resources, Donald Miller, uh, watertight marketing quick videos where clients can get a quick summary of of what's needed what makes websites convert and we can talk about that so I'm using that as that kind of tool let me get this out of the way um, 
So uh, that's one of my aims. And also, the other thing is, I'm moving to CSS, but I'm trying to make it set up so it's as easy as options. And the reason for doing this is not, I'm not poo-pooing Gutenberg for the future. I want to try and remove dependency on platforms, including Beaver Builder as well. So by having these systems where I mark up different areas of the content and it's associated with my style sheet, as long as I've got a platform where I'm allowed to mark up, put the CSS in areas and it can arrange rows and columns for me and move in uh, dynamic content in there, then effectively I only need to change out some of my selector names. I could do that with a find and replace and then move to another platform with my system in place. So I'm not trying to create a greater dependency on Beaver Builder. I can't imagine me being without it at the moment, but the idea is to build something separate to it. So I could move if things change, but at the moment I'm investing in uh, Beaver Builder. Okay, so what's next for my project? Um, well, more functional templates. I just covered that. I want to try and do stuff that's got a bit more whiz bang on it because it's just nice. To, it's hard work to try and set up something for like some scrolling effects if you need to do it for one client. So if I've got some basic templates there, then that's going to take the work out of that. And also, hopefully, if it's used by other people, then it might reduce the demand on Beaver Builder to have that as part of core, which is going to be uh, quite heavy uh, resource. It's quite a heavy resource on those uh, sites that have it. Um, more layout template options. Obviously, I want to, with my wireframe, I want to be, look at all of the kind of designs that are out there and build some. So there are some pre-built templates that are fairly similar. I want to try and get a, a range of those so you could easily adapt them quickly. So that's going to take a bit of time for me to think about. Um, I forgot what I'm right. Oh, yes, Beaver Thema template. So, you know, ideally I want to build in probably as a separate product. So we've got a uh, product, I called it. it <laughs> I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so there's headers and footers in there. And also, I mean, if you're working, which you often do with the post module, when you've got Thema, um, you can often put style in. Well, you can put style in in there. So I want to do some templates with that to build up that because I use their headers and footers. And then... Uh, once I've got something that I think is pretty much in place, my videos will probably turn into ones where I'm using the system over and over again to build different types of websites, just showing how I'm using each of the modules, putting it together. So it will make sense of a system if somebody else wanted to adopt it, because as it stands, it would be quite difficult. So that's where I intend to go. It's quite an ambitious thing. A few people have asked me about, is this really free? You know, what's the, what's the catch, I guess, uh, exactly what I would think myself so look I'm never going to be doing well uh, I'll not say never but there is no intention for me to turn this into something to make money out at least where I have a product where I sell it to you but what I I will need to fund this in well it, the speed of it needs funding if I need to get on with it then I need to uh, cut down some work. So I have been offered some work a few times recently, which I've turned out because I wanted to kind of work on this a bit more and I can't do this endlessly. And uh, I'm not one of the kind of affiliate salespeople. I have affiliate links there, but as I'm usually talking about products, which I've used for some time, there's not much in it. So I would think over the last 10 videos, this including this one, I don't think I've earned a single affiliate money and I'm, I'm turning away work. So I am going to try and fund this by, I will put a deals page uh, with all of the kind of affiliate links for things that are, that we might use uh, that are connected with this. And if you're buying from it and you want to help fund this or allow me to turn down work a bit longer to work on this, then buy from that. Let me know if you like. I'll add you to a sponsor on the site. But that's the, the, the least cheesy way I could think of trying to get some money back from doing this. It's something I would do for myself. It's very much, I don't, you know, I'm old enough now to only want to do things for passion, not for money. But of course, I still need money. So, um, you know, the more people will just buy their products from my affiliate links, putting in some funds for me to carry on with this project. If you do that, then, well, that would be wonderful. Um, but otherwise, 
and not I shall carry on but it'll just be a bit slower all right I think that's enough for one video I know I droned on a lot I'm sorry about that but uh, I hope it was of some use anyway thanks very much and I hope to see you in another video bye bye